Welcome to the 1980s. This is a 1983 Porsche 911 SC Cabriolet. And just a few weeks ago, I had a 1982 SC in a beautiful chocolate brown, and I encourage you to click on the card and watch the video on that. Uh, what's that old saying? A high tide lifts all boats, and it's absolutely true. If you've been following the Porsche market, you know that the prices, especially of older air-cooled cars over the last several years, have been going up, and through COVID, prices have been escalating even farther. So maybe you've been dreaming about owning a 993, the last of the air-cooled 911s, but the prices are just through the roof. So you have to reevaluate, think about what you really need, and your budget. And for a lot of people, they're going back into the earlier air-cooled cars to try and find some value. And thanks again to Core Motor Cars here in Vancouver for letting me borrow this car for the day. The owner of Core Motor Cars is telling me that typically cabriolets are a bit unloved in the collector market, but even prices of cabriolets have firmed and gone up. And there's a reason for that, and we'll get to that when we get in the car and go for a drive. So this car, originally from Japan, then it was shipped to the United States and then made its way here to Canada. This car has been parked in a garage for the last five years. And because of that, when they pulled it out of the garage, they drained the gas out of the fuel tank. They went from one end of the car to the other and did a complete service, including a valve job, new front struts, new tires, basically everything that needed to be done on the car because it'd been sitting for so many years was done, including a brand new roof that also includes a new rear window. So thanks again to Core Motor Cars here in Vancouver. Let's get in, we'll go for a drive and I'll tell you more about what it was like in the 1980s. Well, the nice thing about buying an older air-cooled 911 is the interiors, for the most part, are the same uh, from the 60s through the 70s, the 80s, even into the 90s. There are some small changes for things like the HVAC system, which is stuff they certainly worked on, but the overall layout is entirely the same. Five gauges behind the steering wheel, the radio is closer to the passenger than the driver, the ergonomics in these old cars, not particularly good, but that's not what it's about. And this one, as I mentioned, I didn't pull the roof out because I don't want to wrestle with it, but this has a brand new roof, as I mentioned, including the rear glass. It's also got a new steering wheel, and uh, this looks period correct as well. And there's the horn. So these cars have aged very well because they didn't really change them for all those decades. Oh, one thing I'm gonna get here. Hang on a second. I got the cheat sheet here with all the stuff that's been done to this car. As I mentioned, if you're leaving a car sitting for five years, this is the kind of thing you have to do to get it ready again. Oil and filter, of course, changing that. The brake fluid change replaced the fuel filter, alternator fan belt, distributor cap, rotors, ignition wires, windshield wiper blades, valve adjustment, that's a big one, new plugs, sump cover gasket, new front struts, Replace shifter and coupler, HVAC blower motor has been replaced. Four wheel alignment because there's brand new Michelin Pilot Sport AS4s on each corner. So that is an extensive list of updates done to this particular car. So if you have an old air cooled car, it is a commitment to keeping it up. And as I said in one of the previous videos, actually I encourage you to watch that 911 SC video I did a few weeks ago. When you're buying a car like this, you're buying the previous owner's commitment to maintenance and keeping up on all those things. All right, let's start it up and go for a spin. Well, that was easy. Now, as I mentioned, this car is originally from Japan. It was sold from Germany into the Japanese market. And you might see a few of these in the marketplace and wondering to yourself, why are these Japanese cars showing up in North America? Well, Japan has a progressive tax system for older cars. As cars get older, they tax them more, the insurance is higher, and the reason this is done is they don't want the Japanese fleet of cars on the road to be old. They want it to be new and fresh. So keeping an old collectible car on the road in Japan is a very expensive proposition. So a lot of them get shipped here to North America. We benefit from that because J Japanese owners, for the most part, are very fastidious in their maintenance of their cars. And the other thing is, in Japan, they drive on the left side of the road, not on the right side of the road. So why is this a left-hand drive car? Of course, Porsche makes right-hand drive Porsches for the UK market and Australian places like that. But it was very prestigious in Japan, certainly in this era, to drive a left-hand drive car. 
So you drive a Porsche, first of all, that's a major flex, and you're driving a left-hand drive car, that's another major flex, and we benefit again from them coming with the steering wheel on the right side of the, actually the left side of the car. Now, if you're a child of the 80s, you probably remember the movie Against All Odds. You certainly remember that Phil Collins song, Against All Odds. Well, an iconic classic car chase in that movie between a Ferrari 308 and this, a 911 SC Cabriolet. And I remember watching the movie, watching the car chase. I thought the car chase was very cool, but not really going for the Ferrari. I was always a Porsche guy, so seeing the 911 Cabriolet, uh, that really got me excited. And I'm driving the exact same car, except this one's silver. So of course this car is low to the ground, it's got a nice suspension, but buying an old air-cooled 911 isn't about straight out performance, it's about the experience. Driving a vintage Porsche isn't about power, unless you've got maybe a turbo for example, because this car has 201 horsepower. Now a four-cylinder Toyota Camry has more power than this car and probably faster in many respects. So it's not about just performance and horsepower, it's about the experience. The feeling you get sitting low, your nose is so close to the windshield, the smell of the engine, the vintage looking interior, it's all of that. And opening the garage and looking at it all the time, that's a big part of owning one of these cars. I was talking to Core at Core Motor Cars and he said, because of COVID, People are realigning what they think they want with what they actually want to do with the car. So a lot of people think they want to have a coupe, but they're realizing maybe they're not traveling as much, they're staying home, they want a car that they can take out on the weekend and really enjoy it, put the roof down. So these cars are now starting to get attention, one, because they're priced less than a lot of the other air-cooled 911s, and because Typically, cabrios were overlooked, but now people are looking at them and thinking, you know what, I can have a piece of history, and I can have a Porsche, and I can have a convertible and enjoy it on those few days you actually drive the car. It makes kind of sense, doesn't it? I've owned coupes. I'd be happy with a convertible, especially if it was what I could afford. And uh, this one drives nicely. It's amazing. This car is almost 40 years old, and driving it here today, it feels like it did all those years ago. It's amazing how these cars have held up. Let's be honest here. People who buy these older air-cooled 911s are using them sparingly, taken out on the weekend, hand washed, driven for a little while, then tucked back away in the garage. It really is a passion project, owning one of these older air-cooled 911s. When you take the garbage out, you go through the garage and you get to see your car sitting there. It's a lot of fun. So these cars are now stabilizing and going up in value. As I mentioned at the beginning, a high tide lifts all boats. And now people are really looking at these as an investment for the long term. Thanks again to Core Motor Cars here in Vancouver for letting me borrow this for the day. We do a fun, cool, or collectible car every Friday on the channel. So hit subscribe and the notification bell, and I'll see you next Friday.